Here we go. All right, so this is the webinar on Elixir and Phoenix security for preventing SQL injection. I just started the recording and we're gonna go through you know, this problem in Elixir and Phoenix. So let me admit some more people to the call and we will begin. So this is the kind of example web application we're gonna start out with. It's a very simple setup where you have you know, your basket and then the min queue is being passed. Oh, before, I guess I should ask, can everyone actually see this on my screen? Um, I wanna make sure the font is big enough, just in, um, in chat would be good. Okay, nice. All right, so everyone can see. So very simple, we've just got the min quantity here. Let's add, you know, up it to five, and then you can see only two fruits. And if we if we go too high, none of the fruit shows up. So just kind of a simple setup because we we really just want to focus on one user input, and then I'm going to use that to show you um, how like Ecto does things securely. So when I when I read the source code of a Phoenix application, I like to start with the router just because that's where everything is kind of organized at the top. So very simple. We have our router here. And then we have, you can see one, two, three, four, five different endpoints. So they're all kind of like basket underscore and then a letter. And all of these go through to the page controller. So I'll show you that code next. Make it a little bit smaller here. So you can see we have basket A, B, C, and all of these have the, an identical kind of layout here where it's just take the you know, minimum quantity input from the user, you pattern that this is just like a pattern match in Elixir. And then we're calling goods dot a get fruit, b get fruit, c get fruit. And that's how you know the query is happening in, in this goods function. So the router and the page controller, really generic. Um, the kind of meat of our talk tonight is going to be in the goods, in the goods file. So to begin, I'll show you what a secure um, query looks like, which should be kind of familiar to everyone here. So this is the first example you probably saw if you read the Phoenix book or you've worked with Ecto, where you just have a standard query like from, this is, you know, import Ecto query from F in fruit, where F dot quantity is greater than or equal to min quantity and F dot secret is false. And then you do repo dot all. So I'll show you the kind of malicious string we're gonna do here. It's the same one from the slides earlier. But you can see when I when I do this, it gets you get an error saying this or one equal one in where it cannot be cast to type integer in query. So what what this essentially means is Ecto knows that you know min q it's expected to be an integer because of the quantity um, set in the schema. So the fact that you've provided this string, you're basically just going to get an integer like cast error. But even if this was a string, um, it's not just the casting to an integer that provides the security. It's the fact that Ecto knows like, okay, you know, this is external user input because of this caret symbol here. You know, we're gonna put that in a parameter inside the query and no matter what user input um, gets sent, if it's malicious, that's not gonna allow you to break out of the query. Um, it's just gonna be interpreted within this parameter and that's what's gonna run. So the SQL injection will not work. If, if all of the you know, code in your code base looks like this, you're essentially safe. So now um, I wanna talk about Ecto's fragment, which is right here. So I'll comment this out. Let me actually stop the application because I wanna show you all something. So Ecto also has the fragment, which is kind of like, they call it like an escape hatch where you wanna run you know, some SQL specific command, but it's not in the Ecto library, you can use the fragment. And you can see it's kind of still part of like the Ecto from here. But what you can do is the kind of the string interpolation in Elixir, where we're going to say f0 dot quantity is greater than or equal to min q and secret is false. So what's what I want everyone to think about here is that in Elixir, like the way that this string is represented, like if you were doing native programming, is it knows that this min q variable is interpolated right there and Ecto picks up on that. So let me show you what happens when, well, you can see the error already, but if, if I run mix PHX server, we get a compilation error and it specifically mentions um, SQL injection attacks. So Ecto query compile error. 
To prevent SQL injection attacks, fragment does not allow strings to be interpolated as the first argument via the pin. I, I see an awesome in chat. That is nice. It is awesome. Yeah. So even if, you know, like th this just looks vulnerable. Like, I don't know if anyone here has done pen testing or, or like software security assessments before, but it's like, ooh, like a, like there's some like raw SQL query with like user input put right in. But yeah, the Ecto, the Ecto developers, like the people who designed the library, this was very smart of them that you can't like introduce the, the vulnerability just by doing this. Like it'll, it'll just fail compilation. Evil. So great, great work on that one. All right, so let's look at another code example with um, Fragment. So you can see in this example, the whole line, it was just kind of like one argument to the fragment function, which was the string. But down here, you can see that I have a fragment, where, but this, um, this sign right here, the question mark, that stands for interpolation or you know, it's going to be put in as a parameter. So if you read the blog post, it's a little bit different. I had it set up where I did a string to integer and then um, I wanted to basically show like in a normal situation, you do string to integer and then that would fail. That would cause the thing to fail. But with, but I didn't want people to get the impression that the reason that it was secure was because of string to integer. It's, it's really because Ecto understands what's happening here. So I changed the, the C a little bit where this is going to be a string now. So I'm going to put in a string where it's like F zero dot name like, and let me show everyone what happens when I do this for the C function. Okay, so it might look like something happened, but I want everyone to turn their attention to the debug statement here. So you can see that the, the query that was executed was, you know, select the standard um, things basically from the database from fruits where F0 name like dollar sign one and F0 dot secret is false. And then the parameterized like value here is that malicious string, the or one equals one, and then the comment. So that, that string is not allowing you to like break out of the query and perform like a malicious attack. Ecto knows what you're, like Ecto knows what's going on. It basically knows, hey, this string, it's meant to be put inside the query. Don't let it break the query. So even though you have a fragment here, it's still, it's still secure code. You wouldn't be able to perform like a SQL injection right here. So that's where we are for the first uh, three functions. I'll read chat now. Looks good. Oh, nice. We have someone um, retired who's tutoring students in Elixir and Phoenix. Um, that's awesome. That's really good. One thing other frameworks do is regex match in URL parameters. So only integer slugged or match, which avoids a lot of these issues. Unfortunately, Phoenix does not have this. Oh, that's really interesting. Um, yeah, I, I don't think they do regex matching, but um, I, think, I think it all kind of falls on Ecto. Phoenix is really interesting as a project because it, it kind of glues all these other projects together. Like it, there's plug, there's the templating engine, um, there's Ecto and it kind of puts everything together in a very good, in a very good way. Okay, so that was the um, the C fruit example. We're still not vulnerable to, to SQL injection, as you can see. So I'm going to move on to the uh, D get fruit. So now I have you can see the full query here, where it's just like everything's written out. I'm not. I'm kind of using Ecto, so I'm using the Ecto adapters SQL dot query. Um, and then it's, you know, repo, this is like the repo that we're in, Q is this query, and then min Q is going to be taken from user input. Um, this is also modified a bit from the blog. I think in the blog, I had this with the integer dot or the string to integer, but here I want to kind of show you the exact same thing that's happening, where even though we're using this raw query command and Soblo, which it's basically a static analysis tool for Elixir. Um, I'll, I'll go into more detail about Soblo later. But essentially, if you run Soblo, it will tell you like, hey, this function is vulnerable to SQL injection probably because you're using query here. 
but let me show you what happens when we actually try to exploit this. So as you can see, here is our query, and this is our malicious input. So it's, it's exactly the same story as with um, previously with Fragment, where because of this pattern, so you kind of see how it's like the query and then the pre and then like the input, and it's the same pattern up here where like here's kind of your Fragment query, and here's the input. So in both of these situations, Ecto knows like, okay, anything in here, it's, you know, not used to construct the query it's like a parameter within the query don't let it break out and become a security problem um, so even though we are literally using like the raw query adapter and you know it's like written out here it's it's still not vulnerable and, and Soblo will even warn you that this is vulnerable to SQL injection it's still not actually vulnerable um, just kind of going to show how like how difficult it is to introduce this vulnerability um, oh, one question. How does Fragment know that it has an interpolated string? Wait, that's a great question. So up here, this is where the string interpolation is. If you do like a, like a, an unquote in Elixir, you'll see that the way this string is represented, it's not just like a raw string. There will be like, oh, and like to construct the actual value, you need to evaluate, you know, this variable. And Ecto gets in kind of like so Ecto is not just taking like the evaluate string. Ecto knows that the that the real value of this string like depends on this evaluation. Um, you can override this with macros. So I guess that's something to be careful of. Like if somebody has written a macro in your code base that for some reason like evaluates and in interpolated strings to bypass this fragment warning. Um, I mean, that that's, yeah, that'll be a problem because you've kind of like saw that there was this big warning sign that said, don't do this and, and completely bypassed it. So perhaps look out for, for that in your code base. Okay, so finally we get to the, the actual vulnerable function now. So uh, out of all of these, this is the only one where your attack will actually work. So let me show you here what happens. So we do basket E. And it worked, finally, we actually had a SQL injection. So you can see that the secret fruit is a peach um, that, and there's a hundred of them. So the way this happens, um, you can see kind of in the query down here where f dot quantity is greater than equal to zero or one equals one comment and the secret is false. So that end secret is false, just got commented out basically raw user input is being used to construct this query and the attacker has essentially won. Now you can kind of execute um, like raw code, like in the SQL interpreter. There, there are some situations like, so here, like, like if this was a real pen test, you know, this would be considered like a high severity finding, but because it's like a select statement and a from statement, there are like you might need to break out of it. There are some like sandboxes for like SQL environments. That is something that exists. But essentially, the the fact that an attacker can construct an arbitrary SQL query that is really bad. And you know this would be like a vulnerability that you would absolutely want to get fixed. So that's kind of the overview. So these are like the kind of the main five functions I wanted to show everyone tonight. So just to recap. Standard Ecto query, like the style everyone's probably used to on this call. This is not vulnerable. One misconception I've, I've heard, I was talking to a potential uh, Praxial IO, someone was interested, and they said, you know, I'm using Ecto, but I don't really trust it. Like I want some more security because it's like an open source library, like is, is Praxial more secure? Um, and I felt bad because I, I wanted to explain that you know, Ecto is actually very secure. Like Ecto is great at preventing SQL injection. Like if, if you're just writing code that looks like this, you're secure against it. Um, so the second example, we had this fragment where even if you're kind of like interpolating directly into a string, which is a bad, and this is actually like, the, this is like the pattern that is vulnerable to SQL injection. Cause you can see it down here where when I constructed this query, I did this. So you can see Ecto adapters SQL query this doesn't uh, care if the string is interpolated. This will just let you go ahead, run it, all good. 
um, the fragment is the um, piece that really cares. So, you know, it, it's sort of like if you're doing secure development, ideally stick with Ecto. If you need um, kind of the escape hatch, if you're using fragment, you're fine. Um, but when you get to the point where even if you're writing a raw query like this, as long as you have it in the parameters in the third, in the kind of the third arity here, you're fine. It's really this pattern where you're like building a query, interpolating the value right here. That is where you're going to run problems. So that concludes the sort of part about um, SQL injection. Um, I'll go to chat and see if we have any questions, but since we have a little bit of time, I can also show everyone SoBlo, which is like the static analysis tool, which is fantastic for um, detecting, detecting problems in your application. So yeah, I don't see anything else in chat. Um, oh, do you ever write tests to verify injections are properly avoided? I personally haven't really seen that. Um, if you have a function, I would say like if, if there's like kind of this style in your code, it would make sense to kind of have a malicious test in there um, to see like, okay, can like we modify this? Or especially if you were in a situation where like you were like, let's say this function was vulnerable and then you patched it, but you want to make sure there's not a regression. I would say that would make a lot of sense. But as long as you're kind of just avoiding this pattern, like you're, you're pretty much good. Um, you're not constructing like a SQL query out of, out of strings. How do people usually find out someone is using injections in a production deployment? Anything uh, we should look out for? So it's not something that usually comes up uh, maybe during QA or something, but like, let's say you deploy this vulnerable code to production. Um, Ideally, what will happen is somebody will report, hey, I found like a SQL injection problem in your website. Could I please have some money? Like, do you have a bug bounty program? That is like the good outcome. And you like should um, give that person some a payout if your company is set up for that because that's a great find you. Um, the really bad thing that happens is somebody dumps your entire database and you find out about it uh, because they were bragging on Twitter or something that they hacked your company. But that does happen. Um, there's news articles like that. If you go to like the, the Wikipedia page for SQL injection, there's a lot of examples. There's a lot of like high profile, um, like hacks that made the news, so to speak, where this was the, the root cause. So yeah, I, I, I mean, the main thing I would recommend is just use Soblo. Like, like Soblo is so good. It's such a great tool. It's free. Um, Praxialio has like this vulnerability management thing that's integrated with Soblo. If your company needs kind of something a little bit more where you're tracking the findings, but Soblo's core functionality, it's completely free. And I'll just show you, I'll show you how to use it right now because it's really nice. So you can see in my mix file, I have Soblo installed here. And I'm gonna go back to goods because I wanna show everyone the finding. So this is a Soblo skip. Um, I'll delete it just so that it picks up on it. Cause I wanna show you, there are false positives sometimes. I think it's important that we mention it. Do I still, do I have Soblo skips here? No, I don't think so. That's good. Okay. So yeah, you just run with Soblo. And here we go. You can see that there are two findings. Um, the first one is, it's actually interesting that's low confidence. I, I would have thought it would be high confidence, but yeah, essentially, the findings here are um, you're missing content security policy. That's like a cross-site scripting uh, protection for web applications. HTTPS is not enabled. This one is usually a false positive just because like you're, it, it's so dependent on your configuration. Like, are you using a platform as a service? Are you hosting on Amazon or something? But these two are, are the one you should really be paying attention to. Um, so you can see on line 42, it, that's the D get fruit. That's the one that's not actually vulnerable, um, but it basically points it out. And then line 57, that's in the E get fruit. That's a, um, that's a true positive. So this one, it's not actually a finding, but if, you're, if someone's calling like, like sql.query and you can just avoid it because you don't know if someone's gonna, 
oh, like, why are we doing this? It's just so much easier if I just put it in and then you're vulnerable. So even though it's like technically not a finding, I think this is a really good, it's really good that um, Soblo mentions this. Um, but yeah, that's literally how you use it. You literally just install it. You run mix Soblo, you get the scan outputs. Um, you can output it in JSON if you want. So like pipe it to your Slack or something or have it run in your CI CD pipeline. That's really what you want to be doing because Soblo doesn't only check for SQL injection. It's looking for like cross-site scripting, remote code execution, all of these um, security problems. So yeah, just basically, you know, like be aware of what your queries are doing in things, but using Soblo is, is definitely the best option. All right, so that kind of concludes the, re the recorded portion of tonight. I'm just gonna stop recording right now. Um, let me do that.